What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today I'm continuing my monthly Q&A series. I have a bunch of tech and random questions that you guys have asked and I will be answering starting with a really important one I think about Intel's newest CPUs that are launching very soon, the 11900K. Why does it have eight cores and not 10? Excellent. If you need next-gen storage, the ADATA XPG Gamex S70 is an SSD that actually uses PCIe Gen 4 bandwidth, hitting read speeds up to 7400 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 6400 megabytes per second. It's an M.2 SSD equipped with XPG's proprietary aluminum heat spreader designed for increased surface area and airflow. The S70 comes in capacities up to 2 terabytes, supports NVMe 1.4, and features dynamic SLC caching with a DRAM cache buffer. It's backed by a 5-year warranty too, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. So this is Probing Paul episode number 58, and if you guys aren't familiar with my Q&A series, uh, check it out. As a playlist you can look into, I have lots of old Probing Pauls, and um, this is episode number 58, and all of the questions I'm answering today were asked in the comments of previous episodes. So leave me a question down in the comments section below if you're interested in me perhaps answering that next month. And today we're starting with our first question from Derek G. Uh, and this is, why is Intel for 11th gen, dropping their 10900K successor down to eight cores again. Uh, and then this is actually a longer comment and I kind of cut it off a little bit. Sorry, Derek, but he, he went on for a few different things about talking about how he likes Intel, but uh, it seems like a downgrade. And yes, he's correct. The 10900K, the last gen flagship from the 10 series, had a 10 cores, 20 threads. And now the uh, newly announced 11900K, uh, which this isn't, but I'm gonna hold it up and pretend it is, has eight cores, which is definitely less. And especially in a competitive CPU landscape, uh, where you have AMD as your primary competitor uh, for desktop CPUs, who is rocking all the way up to 16 core uh, CPUs on the mainstream platform. Uh, stepping back in that area does seem like it uh, isn't gonna reflect very well on Intel. And I would agree with you, just as I'm talking about today, and I'm sure other people are gonna be talking about, uh, it seems like a step back, but is there a reason why Intel made that decision rather than going with another 10 core flagship? Uh, there's a few articles linked in the description about this, including a Nantex uh, excellent article about the 11th gen preview that Intel recently did at uh, CES 2021. Here's the quote from the article I will point you towards, which is that Rocket Lake, which is the code name for these 1100 series CPUs, is built upon Cypress Cove. And Cypress Cove is a uh, code name for the microarchitecture that's under the hood. Cypress Cove is a reimagining of Sunny Cove that has been backported to Intel's 14 nanometer process. The goal was to enable Sunny Cove performance and instruction support such as AVX 512 on consumer 14 nanometer, albeit with a larger core size and any related power and efficiency changes. So Intel, as you may know, has been manufacturing CPUs on the 14 nanometer process for quite some time now. They announced 10 nanometer, a process shrink, all the way back in 2015, and then they had products on the roadmap in 2017 and 2018 and 2019 and 2020 and stuff, and those products just kept getting pushed back and pushed back. Wikichip has uh, an article on Sunny Cove, which is again the microarchitecture that is going to be at the heart of these new CPUs that are coming out. And here's just a quick little picture showing that back in 2015 you had Skylake, 2015-ish, and then KB Lake and Coffee Lake, and those are all on 14 nanometer, but KB Lake, Coffee Lake, and Comet Lake were all improvised, quote unquote, because 10 nanometer was delayed. At the same time, they were developing 10 nanometer micro, micro architecture, which orig was originally called Palm Cove, which was scrapped and then replaced with Sunny Cove. Now, part of what makes this all confusing is that Intel has developed code names for, for lots of different things. They have a code name for the micro architecture itself. And then they will also have a code name for like a set of products that might be based on that micro architecture. So if we look back at this image, uh, we're currently on Comet Lake. That's what the current 10 thousand ten series of processors are. Coffee Lake had two revisions. That was the 9,000 series and 8,000 series. KB Lake was a 7,000 series and Skylake was a 6,000 series. So we were supposed to have Sunny Cove based desktop 10 nanometer parts. They instead took that 10 nanometer microarchitecture design and backported it in order to create Cypress Cove. And Cypress Cove is the microarchitecture at the heart of the 11900K and the other new CPUs in the 11 series. Because there are inherent benefits to a process node shrink, which usually results in uh, lower power usage and higher efficiency, and uh, there's there's other elements that go along with it as well. But because you're dealing with a microarchitecture that was built for 10 nanometer and then switched back to 14 nanometer because they needed to actually be able to produce it in volume, they either didn't have as much space to work with or they would have needed to make the die size bigger. That would have resulted in uh, increased power consumption. And at some point, the folks at Intel decided that, uh, you know what, we're going to just ditch that core count 
arguments because obviously AMD is winning that anyway since they have 12 core and 16 core variants, which uh, wouldn't matter if you're talking about a 10 core or an eight core, 12 and 16 is more anyway. And what they really wanna focus on is IPC or instructions per clock, single core performance, because that is where AMD made huge gains with the 5000 series. That is where AMD is beating them. And that is where they need to claw back if they want to say that we again have the best CPU for PC gaming. Next question here from Shane Eslick. Uh, Good day, Paul. Good day, Shane. Uh, considering you're accepting unanswerable questions about the future, I have a question about reviewers and NVIDIA. Ooh, this sounds, sounds scandalous. As rumors suggest, next gen RTX will be a 4000 series. Will reviewers be saying how stupid NVIDIA's naming scheme will be when they get to RTX 10,000 series in seven years, like has kind of happened for Intel. Also, Shane, thank you very much for uh, your support by watching the ads that play on my channel. That's very much appreciated. Uh, all right, so this is a this is actually a good follow-up to that the first question, because when Intel first said, we're gonna have a 10900K, a lot of us were like, that's too many numbers, Intel. You should adhere to the three digit or four digit option that uh, most tech products tend to stick to because 11900K, 10900K, I'm still of the opinion that those are, it's too many numbers and it's too confusing. And oh yeah, guess what? I just answered a question to sort of try to clarify some of the confusion around that. And I felt like I ended up more confused after trying to answer that question and talking about all the micro architectures involved. All of the big tech companies deal with this to some degree and uh, I don't think any single one of them has come up with the ideal solution for like here's how we are naming our products so it's straightforward and people can look and understand that this is the good one and this is the less good one and this is the more expensive one and this is the less expensive one because with marketing once you establish something like that you'll have other marketing people who come in and try to co-opt what you've already done with branding a certain product and try to you know squeeze in a, a less good product but name it the same so people will associate the branding from the better product and the less good product. But I think I can explain uh, what's probably gonna happen as we move forward with uh, NVIDIA's, you know, they had the, tw the 10 series and the 20 series, now they're on the 30 series, they're probably gonna go to a 40 series or a 4000 series. And I kind of hope they do to some degree because those sequential numbers do help you at least for uh, recently launched products sort of delineate like, all right, that's the newer one and that's the older one. But let's take something like this, uh, the new 6800 GPU, right? Let's 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 look up some stats on the 6800. Here we go, the 6800 has 16 pixel shaders, six vertex shaders, 16 TMU, 16 ROPs, 256 megabytes of memory. What kind of memory? Oh, it's just DDR. They were just, they, were just, they just used DDR for that. Uh, and a 256 bit memory bus. Uh, that's that's pretty impressive. Oh, but that's the NVIDIA GeForce 6800, which launched in 2004, not the AMD RX 6800, which launched uh, just a few months ago, if you, if you believe them that these are actually available for sale anywhere. And I guess I'm just trying to use this as an example of the fact that uh, the numbers, they will get reused probably at some point. Uh, they might put a different set of letters in front or they might have a different series like Intel will have core. Intel will probably do away with core at some point and then we'll have some other naming scheme. And I guess as a reviewer, I just want to focus on uh, holding companies accountable to creating naming schemes for their products that are understandable, that convey some sort of information in terms of like what you're getting because the number is higher so it must be better. And ideally that don't use obfuscation techniques like uh, I'd say AMD has been kind of guilty with like with their APUs when they take their APUs at launch and they say, oh, this is a 3000 series APU, but it's actually using the same CPU microarchitecture underneath as a 2000 series. That kind of thing I'm a little bit less cool with, but uh, for my part, I will continue to try to explain all of this to you guys, even as we eventually get to the point where they have to reuse the numbers again. Next question here is from Ryan Brown. He says, when companies like Intel and AMD are configuring and designing their next gen chips, like, like AM5, they're probably already testing something for AM5. What do they design on? Like, how would you test a processor that doesn't have a motherboard for it yet? Do they have their own motherboards? I'm just curious to see if there's some platform interferences or if it's a build to the spec list they ship out to board manufacturers. Thank you very much, Ryan. And uh, I've often been sampled Engineer, what is called engineering sample CPUs uh, from Intel, I guess in particular, which are the CPUs that are produced that aren't stamped for retail sale. Under the hood, those CPUs should be exactly the same as their retail counterparts. But uh, this question has come up in my mind before too, which is like, are there engineering sample motherboards? And just in general, what is the hardware configuration that these manufacturers need to use as they are developing a product before they have like mass produced motherboards coming out of factories that they can test with uh, more thoroughly? I looked up to try to find some images and uh, I found this uh, PC Master Race Reddit thread where this gentleman, Axtelec, uh, about one year ago, 
did post some images of an engineering sample motherboard. So the, I'll link this in the description if you want to check it out. But this is an LGA 2011-3 motherboard for Intel's high-end desktop platform. You can see certain things like it doesn't appear to have uh, a, a chipset for, for one thing. It's got a green PCB and it's got uh, very like off-the-shelf parts for a lot of this. So this is a board that they put together to be to just have basic functionality so they can test chips. You don't need eight sets of memory slots because you're not going to use them all. And you can see pretty evidently that it says engineering sample only, which uh, generally means that it's supposed to be used internally at Intel for testing. So I think that provides a pretty basic answer to your question, but uh, I have more questions that sort of branch off from that that I, I can't answer right now, but I'll, I'll say what the questions are. Like who, who builds these? Who manufactures these, uh, the PCBs and doing the actual surface mounts uh, tech on there and everything? I, I'd be, I'd be kind of curious to find that out. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they have a few different fabs where they can have those produced, but that is an interesting question. Thank you very very much, Ryan, for sending that in. Uh, G Ball Main says, Hey Paul, I uh, don't know if you have done this or would consider it, but I'd love to see a tour of your studio slash garage setup. Love your vids. Thank you so much. And actually part of the reason I, I brought this in here is to help keep myself honest because uh, I'll be honest, 2021 is getting off to a little bit of a slow start for me. Slow in some ways, relax in other ways. It's 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 really hard to, to give a, a thorough assessment of it all. It's, it's complicated. However, one thing that I have been telling myself and one thing that I have been working on is just stuff that I really need to work on here. Projects I have been delaying for way too long, clean up and organization stuff just to get things in a, a better state here so that I can produce videos without having to dig through piles or anything like that. And I have made a huge amount of progress in the past uh, two, three weeks on a lot of that stuff. And I do have some vlogs uh, that will be coming down the pipeline just to show off some of the work that I have done, some of the work that I have planned and uh, to sort of take you guys through that as I go along. Because right now at the beginning of 2021, it's hard for me to, to give PC building recommendations because there aren't parts available for people to buy and I don't want to pretend like there are. Nevertheless, I still need to make video content. So that's going to be what a decent amount of my content is coming up very soon. So keep your eye out for that and uh, hopefully be getting a lot of work done in the next few days. Although we are expecting a lot of rain, so we'll see if that puts a damper on anything. Next question is from my friend Brian. BPS Customs uh, has a YouTube channel. If you guys aren't subscribed, go subscribe. Uh, he, he complimented my video crispiness. Thank you. Uh, I always get compliments on this setup for some reason. It's just a GH5 with a Sigma 18 to 35 lens and a direct capture to the PC at 1080 60. I'm glad that you're able to make out all the hairs and my sideburns. And I've realized that the next question is also about my hair. And I don't know, I don't know, that wasn't intentional. The question, if there's, if I'm going to pull a question out of this comment from Brian uh, from last, the last Q&A video is see you in Taiwan. Is there going to be a Taiwan trip this year for Computex 2021? I am not hopeful, so just to be perfectly honest. I think we have a bit of an uphill battle um, just in, in terms of getting on top of the vaccine distribution and everything that needs to go on. And, uh, you know, Taiwan has actually done really well uh, with their handling of the pandemic, and they are pretty strict about who gets to visit there. So I know that if there's like a two-week quarantine requirement in order to visit Taiwan, I, I don't think I'll be able to do that because I still have uh, lots of responsibility here at home, but who knows? We'll see how things go. We'll, we'll try to maintain cautious optimism. And I, and I, I absolutely want to go back to Taiwan and do a, a Computex trip again as soon as I possibly can, because it's so much fun and I miss going. Like I said, I have a hair question here uh, and I don't know why I pulled this one up, but Sion Ghosh asks, what's up with your hair? Do you shave it regularly or is it like that only? And I don't know what you mean. Is it like what? I have, I have buzzed hair. I can introduce you to my barber. Uh, it's right here. His name's Wall. And uh, I don't know, every two weeks or so, I put the number two attachment on this and I buzz the top of my head. And since I'm not as young as I once was, I do get questions from time to time and uh, even some accusations like, oh, Paul's is going bald or something like with this stuff up here. Uh, I'm 98% I'm confident that uh, that won't be happening. This part up here might move back a little bit more, but uh, both of my grandpas had uh, full heads of hair uh, even, even much later in life. So uh, I don't think it's going anywhere. And the reason that uh, I have this haircut and have had for so long isn't just because it's, you know, it was part of my logo and stuff at some point, but it is simply due to simplicity and ease of use and uh, expense. You know, uh, we bought the, the clippers and they still work great and I don't have to pay a barber and uh, I don't really have to do much with my hair when it's in this state. So that's why, that's why my hair is like it is. Next question from Ender360 Hertz. Two-year-old preference, and I believe this is referring to two-year-old as in the uh, approximate age of my daughter. Paw Patrol or Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and stock or overclocked? 
I'm not planning on doing any overclocking with my daughter for quite some time because she uh, already runs at uh, a very high frequency on her own. And I will also say that since my mom used to be a kindergarten teacher and would often deal with little kids who uh, had been raised on television, it's my goal to uh, subject my daughter to as little TV as humanly possible until she's four or five. That said, yes, she does watch TV, but she only watches one show. And if you want to know what that is, let me introduce you to Great Big Who. Tulu, Chickadee, and Chick. And of course, Peekaboo. These are the Twirly Woos. It's a show, uh, I believe, from, from the British Isles, and uh, it's available on Netflix, and uh, I, I like it. Actually, we enjoy the Twirly Woos, and our daughter Hannah usually watches a few episodes later in the afternoon just before dinner. It's a great little distraction while we get dinner prepared. So if you have Netflix and you have a very young child, I'd say over the age of one, uh, try out Twirly Woos, because I find that it's like, it's not like a crazy frenetic show, like it's getting them all hyped up and excited about everything, because I don't want shows to do that. Each show is focused on a simple concept like pushing or pulling or learning some vocabulary word or something like that. And the Twirly Woos uh, at their core are just trolls. They show up in any situation and they just kind of mess around and have fun and, and troll people. And uh, then Peekaboo trolls the Twirly Woos. So uh, Peekaboo's I think my favorite. I'm gonna leave them here while I answer this final, final question, which is about uh, the last probing poll that I did, which was on January 9th or 10th or something like that. Uh, at the beginning of the video, I said, nothing could have gone wrong, right? And then somebody was pointing out that if this was pre-recorded, that that opening was even funnier because, you know, first uh, week or two of the year, uh, 2021, did have its share of mishaps. But I guess I just wanted to confirm uh, that yes, that was pre-recorded. Um, the last two Probing Paul Q&A videos that I did were both shots uh, just before Christmas 2020, and then I posted one the week after Christmas and then one at the beginning of January. So like, how could I possibly have predicted that uh, something would have gone horribly wrong? And I don't know, I guess I, I just got those prognostication skills or whatever you want to call them. But uh, I think that is going to wrap it up for this episode of Probing Paul. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, if you guys have any questions that you'd like to ask me, uh, put them in the comment section down below and I'll be browsing through those for the next episode. Stay tuned for more regular content coming at you real soon and check out my store at paulsharbar.net if you want to buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other awesome merchandise to help support me and get yourself some fancy new duds. Thanks again for watching this one, you guys, and we'll see you next time.